so we're live, but it says orientation's locked. Oh, have I changed? Have I changed position? You have, yeah. You've gone on the side now. How's that? Nice? To, That's it. We might have to go. We might have to go like this. That's it. It's done. Perfect. Yeah. Sorry. Right. So wait for a few more people to come in, guys. I'm sorry about the orientation and that it's portrait. We've had a few technical issues. Me and Peter couldn't screw a light bulb in. <sighs> Let's wait for a few more people to come in. We've got Reyes. Hey, I'll tell the others. Yeah. So, guys, there <laughs> there might be a few. There might be a few scheduled live. Oh, the 13, 13 have just come straight in. So, yeah. Anyone that's here. Hi, Jenny. Jenny's a, an OG member. Uh, we've got thirteen people in. Right here we go, guys. Look at all the. Co Can you see the comments, Peter? Just about, yeah, with my oven. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Luke. Hi, Pete. Yeah, go on, Desi Willoughby. She is a legend of the of the house. Right, so firstly, I want to apologise. I've set up about four or five live streams. They weren't working. The, 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 the We tried to go um, landscape and they weren't working. So we've had to go portrait. So sorry, but it is what it is. So I just want to say hello, good morning, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Peter Falden, forens and forensic and search and rescue expert, friend of mine and friend of the channels. How are you, Peter? Very good, thank you, Luke. Good evening, all. Nice to what, talk. What's in that? What's in that cup? Tea. Whiskey. I've had a long drive. It's tea. It's, one second. One second. I'm just turning my volume. Yeah. It's tea. Oh, gone. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. The box in the background. Twenty-three people. So we'll just wait for a few more people to hop in, and then we'll uh, we'll get we'll get into it. I'm just going to read a few comments. Hi, Luke and Peter. Lovely to see you both. Evening, Peter. What about me? I'm excited for whoever wins. Hi, Luke, Peter, and everyone. Evening, Luke and Peter. Um, <laughs> Someone uh, is uh, is in the chat as well. Hello to. You. You're down, you, I believe you're down in Cornwall. Me, yeah, I'm in, I'm in Cornwall at the moment. Yeah, what takes you down those neck of the woods. What I've been doing. I've, I've just I'm doing some writing down here at the moment. I've, I've got some, some writing, so yeah, writing. Mm, That's right. a good. That's a good uh, link. <laughs> we, it's almost like we rehearsed that. <laughs> we didn't. Thirty. Everybody, hit that like button. Let's keep hitting like. Let's get this video seen by everybody. And then later on, we're going to reveal the winners of this book. What lies beneath. Now, obviously, that is what a lot of people are here today to see if they are going to win this book. Uh, and we're going to reveal the winners a little bit later on. But first, we're going to have some fun and games and conversation, um, a Q&A. Everybody, get your super chats in. Get your questions in. And uh, yeah, we'll file them over to Peter. So, firstly, what do, I'm going to read the blur of this book, okay? Right. My name is Peter Falding. No, no, that's you. My name is Peter Falding, and I find things. By the time I'm called, things have generally gone south for someone. This is where my eyes go a bit squinty. It's bring this light in. I'm rarely asked to look for the living. I'm looking for the dead or for the clues that will lead the authorities, sorry, my, my eyes are going really bad here, there we go, mm -hmm. to how they met their end. Sometimes it's simple, the body is in a garden or under floorboards, but sometimes when the murderer chooses open space, a field, a wood, a lake, it's much harder. X rarely marks a spot. In those cases, please call me, me being you. From cold cases and serial killers, to the death of a spy, Peter's true life story is as gripping as the finest horror. And that review is from Peter Jones. James, Peter James. I took my eyes, it's the eyes. Yeah, Peter James, the author. Peter, Peter, Peter James. Peter's books are brilliant. If you like, if you like uh, good reads as well, Peter James is an awesome author. Not Peter awesome. James. Peter Rustic, James. Rach, Rustic Rach says, hi, Peter. Hi, Rach. <laughs> Rachel's, Rachel's a good egg. Uh, Peter, can I ask you a question about the book? Um, 
Something which, obviously, like, we did the documentary together, but I never asked this question. Um, who came up with a title? Was it you? Or did you watch the Michelle Pfeiffer film? With Harry, I, with, uh, we, threw, oh, we, threw, we threw some titles around, and I think it was a, a toss-up between myself and the, and the publishers, Pam McMillan. So we, we came up with it. But they, they actually designed the cover. Which I was it's really rich. artwork. I mean, it's it, it is, and the paperback comes out next year in I think March. So it comes out in paperback, but they've redesigned the cover slightly for for the paperback version. Um, okay. Good, and, and and like I said the other day, it's now being um, translated into complex Chinese, and it's for the Taiwan market. We got that contract signed a couple of weeks ago, and it goes on sale in the USA on the fourteenth of November this year. Any Americans watching? If there's any Americans in the house, could you let yourselves be known, please? Because the book comes out in, sorry, when in November, Peter? 14th of November. 14th of November. So any of, I know there's a, there's a few. Jenny is one of my uh, first. Jenny's been a subscriber since I had about 20. So uh, Jenny's from Arkansas. She's going to be getting the book. Uh, there's a few, a few other Americans that are... Uh, so how are the little ducks that we saw? Oh, how was the duck that we hatched, Peter? Well, I say big. we He's He or she is big now, really big, um, huge. And it's it's quite funny because mum left the baby when she was when when he was mm. born. I remember that. Mum mum walked off, so we we put him her under. A, it was an actual chicken who hatched her, and she walked oh. chicken all day. Quite amazing, really. And so she's been adopted but, by a chicken. Yeah, the chicken. The chicken is mum. So he thinks his mum is chick uh, the chicken, and they just walk around together everywhere, along with the I got actually a funny thing yesterday. I got attacked by my turkey. Um, Gerald, he's he's really violent, and he, he chases my daughter all around the driveway, and he comes after me. And yesterday, I had to give him a slight tap in the chest with my front of my shoe, not hard, just tapped him three times to back off because he yeah. literally he followed me into the kitchen yesterday. And he come running in the kitchen after me, so he's a bit of a character, is is Gerald. I've, I've met some of these animals, and uh, I'll tell you what, it was an experience feeding the emu. Yeah, I could. Yeah. Oh, the I, emus are great. Yeah. Oh they're, god, they're, yeah. And I, you see me on the documentary, absolutely wetting myself with it. They're friendly um, yeah. guys. But every, the the uh, the question, the Q and A is open the whole time we're live. So get your super chats in. Um, it's going to be open from start to finish. Anything you want to ask, like, you know, uh, feel free. Uh, right, Peter, about the book, uh, again, I want to know twofold. Which part was which parts were the most enjoyable to write and which were the hardest to write? I think my early childhood was the nicest to write because, as those who know, I lost my dad in 2013 and... Um, he, he he was a great inspiration to me going down the old disused mines as a child. Yeah. We used to build engines together and strip, uh, build motorbikes and do all sorts of things. So I went, I'd done everything with him and I was the only child. So mum, mum, dad and I used to go down the mines every Sunday was going down the disused mines and they would dig through um, roof falls and they, they would shove me in to see what was on the other side when they could make the hole big enough. So I grew up, that was my life. Um, and I recalled my days at school. I was particularly uh, at school. I was very more interested in sport, um, physics, and metalwork, but not maths or anything like that. So I, I always wanted to be outdoors. Um, so that was the fun thing for me to write. Um, the most difficult bit, I think, was just going back because a lot of the jobs I'd done was pre-internet. And you're looking back in like, you know, 1995 when the internet was at an early stage. So newspaper articles would come out about the work. I, not so much I, we were working, but it never, it wasn't online. So I had to dig all my old press cuttings out, which lucky I kept them. Yeah, it's yeah. Really useful. And it's me doing work in the early days, you know, from digging the protesters out at Newbury Bypass from, um, and then Swampy. I've got to uh, say, yeah, Swampy. That, that was fun, going to meet Swampy, actually. I went up to his house in Wales. Uh, we got a photo opportunity together. Um, yeah, yeah. Dan Hooper, a really nice guy. I mean, he's he's not one of these guys that lays in the roads or anything. He, he likes to dig tunnels, as you know. But I get on fine with him. I was always, we had, you know, I, I used to get on quite well with the protesters, no issues. 
So it's, it's, it's how you treat people, isn't it? If you talk do to you them... Do you have to do a bit of man management with different protesters? Yeah, it is. And like I said, if, if, it's, if someone comes at you aggressive, you put, it puts your back up. If someone smiles at you in life and chats to you, you can literally break the ice. Ha <laughs> ha, got you. So that was quite good. Thank, thank but it, you for one of these things, you can actually... It, it's very difficult to be aggressive to someone who's smiling at you. So, you know, I, I, I'd spend a month down the, trying to dig these people out down the tunnel. I'd be away for weeks on end. Um, big, big jobs to do, very dangerous jobs. But, and you, you're in such a confined area down these tunnels, tiny, tiny little tunnels. And what we'll have to do one night, you'll have to do a live where you can actually put some of the pictures up on your screens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can actually show, show every, the viewers, you know, because um, it, it, you wouldn't believe what some of the stuff they get up to. It was yeah. pretty crazy, just trying to prevent the road being built, like Newby Bypass, you know, Manchester Airport, Hollywood Bypass, and so on. Manchester just, Airport, repping my neck of the yeah, yeah. I just, I just want to say, sorry, there. there's quite a lot of questions flying through. Right, the, right. The, the crawling up the screen. Guys, on this one, I don't normally do this because I'm a man of the people, right? But it's going to be super chats tonight because they are flying up. And, uh, you know, man's got to put bread on the table. So uh, it's Super Chats this evening. There's too many going up. I, 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 can re I can read half a question and then it's gone. So uh, I do apologise, but, like, that's just, um, that's just the way it is. On this particular special evening with our, with our live with Peter Falding. Uh, but Peter, this, I used to write. Oh, God, my iPad fell then. I um, started writing, like, comedy and drama. And it's a lot again. I started writing comedy and drama, right? I've actually written a sitcom, which is how I've, uh, I've got Ronnie Barker's son as my editor. Now, I did lots of writing sessions, and uh, they varied in length, and sometimes I needed uh, a, a, a tea with it or a coffee or I needed certain... I needed to go for a run before I could get into the headspace. Now, um... How long are your writing sessions for? Do you do them in shorts first? Do you spend the whole day? Is it an hour here, an hour there? And do you need any vices? What I mean by that is a cup of tea, uh, a coffee, a, a wine. How do? You, what's your writing process? I, I need <clears throat> I need to be alone, but I think what the when I, I write well on the airplane, so I just flew back from Canada, so I I can get some I get a lot of writing done when I do long haul flying. Which is great. I can sit there and tap away. Time to do it, yeah. And, and and I'm out walking, and I'll I'll dictate my phone as well. So obviously I I live on the farm, so I walk around. I'll I'll talk to myself into the phone, and I'll just spout out things like that. But I think you know it, you I've got to be in the mood. And when when we were getting the final bits of the book, the, the what lies beneath the older one. We went to, um, I think we were in Antigua for two weeks, and we went out there, and my wife and I we used to get up at um, six in the morning, and we'd work for three hours. So I would, I would write, she would, you know, grammar check everything, and, yeah. and take it from there, and, and put a lot of meat on, onto the chapters. So yeah, it, it, that was the time I can relax, and then she would sit by the pool and just tap away all day and re-edit and get it right obviously it was my knowledge and i've, I've got a good memory so i can recall to get the dates checked out as well yeah 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 but it was but it was a lot it it, it was a lot of a lot of work to to get everything in, in place yeah i i was gonna say um um uh i sometimes used to have like writer's block and sometimes you can sit down and nothing happens does it yeah yeah Absolutely. and then sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like ah yeah, well, and you, I, an, and you have an idea. I try not to do that. I, I woke up last night at four because I was jet lagged. I didn't get back to sleep for two hours, and I drove six hours to Cornwall today. You're always jet lagged. <laughs> I am, you know, it, 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 for nine hours, we had, well, we had an eight hour time difference, and we lived, we took off from Vancouver at three in the afternoon, and we arrived home their time at midnight, which was eight o'clock in the morning here. So oh, so you're well messed up, yeah. Then when, when I was away, I had COVID as well. Um, and then my wife got cold. We, we were fine. We were absolutely fine. Um, we just had a cold. But um, I, I was out, you know, doing about 15,000 paces every day, you know, walking up hills. So it didn't affect me. Only on the flight going out, I, I was a bit tired. We just cracked on. Uh, I, 
My dear mother has just texted me saying hello, so she's in the house. Hello, mum. Oh, hey, mum. Sorry, guys. I just want to say, um, if anyone's struggling with how to do a super chat, speak to Rustic Rach and D20 Jenny. They are the people. They are the moderators in this chat. They will help you. I hope um, they've not moderated before. I've not done a live with moderators, so we kind of are winging it a little bit. But you know, say la vie. Um, right. Okay. Let's go a little bit further along. Oh yeah, I was going to say who did the artwork, but it was was it um, was it the Pam McMillan? Pam McMillan done the artwork. I mean, that's a really specialist job. I mean, it was amazing. He came back with it first time, the chap who'd done it, and it was absolutely brilliant. I was, I love I was it. I love it, mate. Really, really impressed with it. The colour. Um, we, we didn't try to change it anything. Um, so yeah, it, it was great. It, 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 he done the Pam McMillan, great publishers, and obviously they're huge publishers. So it was a big deal for me to get a, a publishing deal with Pat, one of the biggest publishers in the world. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was it was excellent, and hopefully they'll publish the next book as well. That's brilliant. Well, let's talk about the next book. Um, um, can you tell us loosely what it's about? Uh, when it's going to be roughly out, or is it kind of in the preliminary stages? I can't believe I got no, that word out. It's we're working through it. There's a lot lot of work going on, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a lead on from the last book. Okay, uh, so it's going to be a lead on about the events probably during COVID, and then post-COVID, right up to the current day. So there's okay. going to be, uh, you know, the obvious will be in there. There's going to be a lot of good, uh, it's going to be an interesting read when it comes out. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And I think a lot of people here are looking forward to it. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, you're just kind of working through it at the moment then. I, I am. I'm, I'm not sure if anyone's listened to the audio book, but it's, it's gone worldwide on audio on, on Apple. I, I got my music, whatever it is, Apple music. And, um, I, not iTunes, um, Audible. So in the, yeah. the actual audio audio book. If you've not can't, if you don't like reading books in your travel, then it's eight hours and fifteen minutes on uh, on audio, and it was narrated by Simon Darwin, the actor. Now I couldn't do his job. He was brilliant. He sat in the studio for five days and recorded, and it, he he done an, an excellent job on it. So um, if you like audio books, then. It's it's an eight hour fifteen minutes of listening. It's 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 quite a gripping story actually. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, just give me one moment. I'm just doing a little technical bit <laughs> right now. Um, won't be a second. And while I'm just doing this, um, the what's the Switzerland? What's this? What's the link with Switzerland? You just like Switzerland because I saw it on the cop. Yeah, we we ski in Switzerland sometimes or Austria. So my little girl, well, she she was been skiing since she was three and a half. So we went out last year. I normally drive out there with the family. We normally... Hi, Hayley. Sorry, my sister's popped in. Go on, mate. That's all right. So we know, yeah, I just brought the cups back from Switzerland. So I love Switzerland. And uh, I, just a couple of souvenirs, really, and got in the house down here. So, yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Right, Peter, what I'm going to do is I want to, um, I want us to learn a little bit more about you, but a bit more casual, you know what I mean? Away from, like, away from the job and the kind of, uh, you know that kind of work, and you know what what that's all about, and just learn, uh, just learn a little bit about you. Thank you for the uh, donation there from Mara. Um, is there a chat? One second, I don't know if that's got a chat with it. Um, is there a question there? One second. I'm a bit of a. This is a bit new. Um, one second. You need, okay. need to get you an Apple Mac. You are. We need to get your MacBook. <laughs> oh, oh, hopefully, hopefully soon. No, I've got a, uh, a donation, but there's no question with it. So, Mara, if you want to ask a question, oh, you don't want to ask a question. Well, if you want, Mara, if you want to ask a question, then you get it in now um, because I feel like you've earned it. Uh, did it right? General quick fire questions, right? Okay, and it is a uh, there's two options basically. Remember, I just remember, I'm jet lagged still, so I'm tired. Oh. Right. It's not. It, no, it's preference. It's not. It's not like uh, you're not being tested, right? And do you know what? As well, anyone that's in the chat, and we keep hitting the like button, everybody. Uh, let's get this video going around, and um, yeah, let's get it moving in the algorithm, right? So, everyone in the chat, if you want, answer this. Answer these questions as well, because they, they, they're for everybody, right? So. I'm going to go in a few seconds. Everyone answer these questions. Right. 
And you can only pick one. There's no, oh, I want both or whatever. You have to pick one. So, tea Cof or uh, coffee? Tea. Tea. Mm. Right. See, I, do you know what, right? I'm tea first thing in the morning. Mm. Well, then straight on to coffee after that. I don't, I don't drink it. I, I hardly drink coffee. Okay. But I always have tea. Yeah. Right, tea. Right, okay. If you had to, football or rugby? Um, football. Football. As a side note, do you, do you support a football team? No, I, well, when I, I used to play for the school when I was a kid and I'd play for a local team, but when I was 16, but I, as my career sort of progressed, I was busy and the military side and everything else, I didn't get a chance and I, I, I sort of, I watched the World Cup, but I don't watch football weekend. I just don't have time. What I do, you know, I'm, I'm, my weekend for me is family time, unless yeah. I get called out. So we're always together as a family and we'll be on the farm and we'll be looking after the animals or we'll, go, we'll be going away or whatever we do, there's always plenty to do. So I don't, we don't normally sit down till about eight o'clock in the evening. So I don't really watch TV. I might about half past eight in the evening. In the summertime, we hardly ever watch TV. We sit out on the patio and have a dog burner and have a glass of wine. As you, as you, when you came down, you know, we, we tend not to watch a great deal of TV. Yeah, uh, I've got a super chat. Uh, it's from Mara. It's going to... Okay, Peter, how do we go about getting Pete... You, how do we go about getting you to talk at um, someone's child's school? Okay. Um, I'm where, in Mersham. Where's Mersham? It doesn't matter. Right. If they if they just call my, call my office on 01306... SGI, yeah? Yeah, SGI. It's on it's Specialist Group International. It's on our website. <laughs> 013-889-969. Calls are recorded. So just, um, you can ring the office, tell them that it's about the Life Jacket campaign. And then what we're doing, so uh, throughout the summer, I deliver the Life Jackets. But yeah. winter, oh, yeah. the helicopter, the weather's unpredictable, the kids are outside. I, I, we don't do any in the winter. We start as springtime. So what we need to do, not a problem, we get it in the diary, get it programmed in now, and that we're taking bookings now for next year, and then I start getting out to what the uh, jacket drops. To Brilliant. The so, Mara, um, yeah, go on that. Go on that. Um, the, the, probably the easiest way. Well, you can replay this. The and get one. Them. Sorry, Luke. The other one is in, info at specialistgroupinternational.com. There's the email address. Uh, so, if anyone okay. if anyone forgets any of the information, uh, you can just go on to Specialist Group International, the website. Yeah, and um, you can you can go through there, I suppose, Peter. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Rustic Rach, is there a question? No, that's just a donation. Thank you, Rustic Rach. Okay, let's get back onto the this or that. Uh, uh, it was a football rugby. You said football. I say football. It's quite split in the chat. It's a rugby World Cup at the minute as well, which is actually oh, it's quite fun. Um, okay, this divides a lot of people, I think. Right, which baffles me. Because I'm 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 one all the way. Summer or winter? I like both. Because I I, I, Ooh, I sitting I, on the fence. Well, I, I think it's summertime for me. I like I like the sun, but I do like to ski. Obviously, we can't do that in England much. But I, I I love the summer. I love springtime onward. I don't enjoy the short days in the winter. I yeah, do. Oh yeah, it's drawing in now, isn't it? But it is interesting. If you go to the Caribbean, those who have not been to the Caribbean. The it gets dark at six thirty every night all year round. In the Caribbean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's boiling oh, right. hot. It's thirty-one degrees or whatever, but it's uh, at six thirty. It's dark, but you don't notice it because the weather's really warm. Where I don't like the cold, wet where we live. It's windy and wet in the winter, and that's quite. You know, it's not ideal. Yeah, so, I'm. Um, I'm, some, I'm uh, sorry, I've got another super chat. Thank you, Amy. Is that a super chat? I can't. Amy Landry, um, there's no question with that, but if you'd like to ask one, then you are more than welcome, seeing as you've just done a super chat. So, Amy Landry, I am going to look out for your uh, your question. Um, if I do miss it, can the moderators please reiterate it back to me? That would be fan Dabby Dozy. Okay, um, you you like your holidays and you work hard, so you're allowed to play hard. City break or beach holiday? I think I know the answer. Beach. Yeah, I thought so. 
What about the people in the uh, people in the chat? Beach holiday. Uh, sorry, let me just stop. Uh, one second, rustic rage. Uh, hi, people. Worked out the super chat. Click the. Okay, okay. Blah blah blah. Um, right. Sorry. Yeah. Um, beach holiday. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It is. I like. Over I, I, like I mean, in Canada, we were all up in the mountains and stuff. So I love it. I love walking. I love photography, as you know. So. Yeah, uh, but I, I in the winter I like to go to the Caribbean where it's warm, where it's yeah. warm, nice sandy beaches. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful, no, and the uh, people are really friendly as well. So it's, it's... nice. The uh, it's la it's largely beach holidays in the uh, in the chat. Everyone everyone likes a beach, don't they? Oh yeah. Apart from sand, gets everywhere. Right. Uh, one second. I've got something from Paula. Um, Amy Landry okay we've got Amy Landry super chat and then Paula has done a donation but you can Paula send us a question and I'll get that I'll get that sorted and now Amy's question is do you have a favorite breed of dog well I've got oh I, I love all dogs um my mum's got a Yorkshire terrorist um cross <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, um Oh, what's his name? Sparky. Sparky. Yeah. And I've got um, a Dolly. Dolly's my German Shepherd. Uh, Love her. Bonzi is the uh, Portuguese water dog. They've got webbed feet, swimming. And I've got Maya, the um, Malamute cross German Shepherd. She was on the Facebook. You see her on the Facebook. I posted her on my Facebook this morning, my old one. So, yeah, they, they, they're, they're the ones I walk with every day. They're my... Yeah, I, I, you know, I got quite attached to uh, Dolly, didn't I? Oh yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, Paula, I'm just waiting for your questions to come through. I've got my eye on it. Uh, and Desi Willoughby, I can't see your question, Desi. So, if you want to just um, put it in the normal chat, I'll make sure it's read. Let me write down who. One second. Uh, Desi, and do is. Okay, I've got another. I've got another one here, Peter. I love all your animals. Which was your first one? Oh, that's it. Right. So, so years ago, um, I bought some land down in Sussex in Colgate, and um, I had about thirty acres down there. And I bought some pit. I, I rescued some pigs from the RSPCA. So they were my first ones. Now um, they were. They were. We got some, and I got some sheep as well given to me. So we yeah. had. We had pigs, and we've still got, I think, twenty-four sheep. Still got lots of sheep. Still got alpacas and, and emus and everything else. But they they they're not in a compound. They they roam the land, as you saw. They're not locked in. They're just free to roam. They just graze. So they they just need shearing once a year and um, clipping. That's it, really. So they're quite low maintenance. Uh, Rusty Rach has sent a question in, and uh, also as a side note, anybody that's watching, you need to subscribe to Rusty Rach. Really wholesome content. I've got a lot of time for her, and uh, she made a video today actually about alpacas, and she referenced our video. So thank well tonight this video. So thank you, Rachel. Uh, right, <laughs> Peter, are you a Christmas jumper guy? <laughs> no, um, no, not really. No. I, <laughs> There's no. your answer, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, someone just said no question, just much respect. Hope it, that's brilliant. Um, someone just sent. Five dollars and said no question, just much respect. So that respects for you, Peter. So thank you to her. That's nice. Um, it's very much appreciated. Really enjoying this live. Uh, I really just want to say I love the. I don't like calling it a community. That's not. Like, I don't. I think it's a bit cringy to be honest. But I like all of the subscribers and everyone that's in the chat. Like you're always really sound. You're always cool. You always chat to each other. There's no trolls, and even if there is, I put them in the troll bowl. So it's all fun. Thank you for just being nice, chilled out, cool people. Here for a good time, like we all are. Good time, not a long time. Right, where was I? City break, holiday, da -da -da. I've not missed any super chats. I have written at the bottom, there's two super chats, there's two questions uh, that can still come in from Paula and Desi. You've paid, but you've not asked a question yet, so I have got you there. Um... Uh, you are there, so you can ask your question at any time. Right, let's get back up to... Um, doo -doo -doo, where were we? Where were we? Okay. All right. This is a big one. This Right, I'm really intrigued about your answer. Uh, anyone that knows me knows my answer. 
And I want to know the, genuinely, I want to know the subscribers and the viewers' answer. Oasis or Blur? Don't let me down, Peter. Don't let me down. Oasis. Come on! Yes, in. The absolute boys. Have you got, do you, do you like Oasis or was that just, uh, you had to pick one? <laughs> No, I, I like I love music. I love I love I love I like you know I I in my era when I grew up I you know I love I love the Eagles and everyone else. I like you know Genesis and I like a lot of the original stuff. The modern music I'm not too into. I like chill out music, but um, I like Bon Jovi. I like all the all the good stuff, all the old stuff. I'll sit and listen. As you know, we'll sit and listen to it outside and just relax in the evening. But I, oh. I like going to tribute bands as well. Do you like the Bee Gees? Love the Bee Gees. Oh, you can't beat a bit of the Bee Gees. Who's a Bee Gees fan in the house? Um, so, uh, I've got a question. A super chat's come in. Will you be surfing while in Cornwall? <laughs> not, I did in the summer, but not this time of year. But I'll be honest with you, uh, my daughter's far better than me at surfing, so I can kneel on the board. But I, I've been coming to Cornwall since I was five years old. It's in the book. And um, every year we you know, we come down here. We got, I've got to go to a house here now, but I think... Uh, the surfboard's in the garage, but I won't be going out. I'm only down here for a couple of days and then back again, just to cut the grass and stuff. So, and then I'm whizzing back. So, um, summer we spend most of the summertime down here. Uh, uh, we've got a, uh, a donation. Thank you. Sorry, my phone's a bit going a bit weird. Thank you. One second. Thank you, your gentleman. It's a, it's. I can't actually quite read it because it's a bit. It's a bit blurry blue, but it's a love hearts and it says, thank you, uh, your gentleman. It's a lovely comment. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, Desi, ask, ask it again. So Luke, please. One second. Let me, please. My eyes are a bit funny. Hold on. Need a secretary. Right. Okay. Desi Willoughby's question. Does Peter like watching documentaries? And if he does, what documentaries does he love to watch? Yeah, I, I like National Geographic documentaries. I watch them occasionally. Um, I don't. I say I don't watch TV a great deal because I'd rather be outdoors doing stuff. Apart from the winter, I watch more TV in the in the winter. We have a log fire every night, so I sit. We'll watch TV from probably I don't know seven o'clock in the evening. In the summer, I don't touch it really. To be honest, we're always outside. But I love documentaries. Yeah, I I actually gave commentary on the Thai Cave Rescue documentary. Um, on Sky and on the documentary and I was on Sky News for three days live commenting on how they were going to get them out um, and I was right in the end I said they'd be put on a stretcher and anaesthetised uh, and I was actually on live on Sky for three three days during that rescue which was interesting but what a fantastic job them guys did incredible uh, way yeah, sorry, I've got a question here and I need to get it out because it's scrolling up <laughs> go, go, go. Uh, Paula has asked, sorry Paula, I didn't actually see it and real. I do need a secretary and I need a new set of eyes and an eye test. Uh, good question is, Paula asked if you've got any uh, female divers at SGI. Not, yes we have, we've got one, yes, yes we, we, we have, yeah, we've got Sarah, yeah, we've got one, one, one female diver, yeah, who's a very, very experienced diver. Yes, we Where are. did she did she come from the military or anything like that? No, she came from a commercial background originally. And she's also a hyperbaric nurse as well. So she's um, she works in the decompression chamber and does that type of stuff in a medical centre. So highly experienced uh, diver. So she, she actually works part time for us um, as part oh, of the that's good. That's good. team. Yeah, so we we she you know, the the team's full time, but we get the occasional one where they want to work with us, and, uh, they she had the right qualification, right, right skill set. So it's Brilliant. breaks it up a bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, let's get back to. Uh, I've done all, I've done all the super chats, I believe. Uh, the moderators, if you, if I've missed any, could you let me know? I, I don't think I have. I've been keeping a little tab down here. Um, everyone's saying that's amazing that you've got a female there. Uh, that's brilliant. Um, um, Derek, I can't just be reading anything, mate, because it's not fair on other people. I'm sorry, man. Uh, right, okie dokie. So, uh, right, back to the this or that. Okay, you your your job is um, it's like a kind of land, sea, air all over the show, and you're a pilot. 
and uh, you also obviously drive like um, boats and stuff like that. Do you prefer this being in the sea or in the air? I like being in the air. Obviously, I I fly a helicopter all the time. I've got a I've got an airplane license, but I normally fly in the USA if I'm flying fixed wing. Oh, nice! But I um I obviously I fly for work um all the time, so I fly end up flying all around the country, flying myself around the country in the helicopter. Yeah. Oh, that was a good, that was I love a good it. Ride. I like good being ride. In a yeah, I like being in a fishbowl. I can see everything. <laughs> that, was, that was a good. That was a good ride in the fishbowl over Sussex, and we went over the uh, we went over the Top Gear set, didn't we? Yeah, we did. You enjoyed that, right? Chinese or Indian? All vote now. Uh, it's a hard one. Indian. It, yeah, depends on the mood for me. I could, yeah, it, really it does me, but I, I excuse one. Yeah. But yeah, true. That is true. I made you pick one, didn't I? You like if I had to pick one, I'd probably go Indian as well. Yeah. Depends where I am, In what food I'm in. Indian, 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 Chinese, Indian. I'm reading all these quick time. Chinese, Indian, Infian. What's Infian? <laughs> Chinese, Indian defo. Spicy or coma? Right, okay. Um, starter and main or a main and a dessert? Starter and main. I'm so not, more, a, I'm, more not a I'm not a big dessert eater, so I don't eat a great deal of cakes or anything. No. Just yeah. I, You're more, I, of, a, more I of a savory like kind of guy. Main. Oh, here's the, here's the cat. So, Peter, what what some of my subscribers will know is that there is a cat that likes to come into the live streams. It is a uh, it's a cat that was rescued from Dubai, and it has the most unique meow. It sounds like a it sounds like a crying baby. So you may hear it at any point. I'm just gonna spare with me, Peter. Hold the fork. I'm just shutting the door. Okay. You're all alone. Come back. I'm back. Oh, right, I've not missed anything. No super chats. Okay. Uh, can the mods slow the chat? No, I think they just... They just... Um, they just come in as they do. Right. Right, guys, I've got the final two. So, only fools and horses or 40 towers? Only fools and horses. Yeah. Got to be on it. What does the chat think, eh? Only Fools or Faulty Towers? Can't beat David Jason. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> someone said, I'm sure Peter's used to holding the fort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's chilling He's chilling tonight. He's not holding any fort. Only no. Fools, Faulty Towers, Faulty Towers, Only Fools. Um, yeah, they're flying in. My sister says Only Fools. Not surprised there because my dad was a big a big fan of it. Um, I love the I love the scene when they're playing the uh, poker. Yeah, I think, is it Trigger or it's uh, I don't know. who's his nemesis? What's his nemesis called again? Oh, Not Trigger. Batman. I like the what, Batman what, one. Boy, Boise. Yeah, but Boise. Yeah, but the Batman. Batman when they do Batman and Robin at Christmas. <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> He goes, where did you get them four aces? The same place you got them four kings. Yeah. <laughs> the north of England or the south of England? Well, I live in the south of England, so I've got to say the south of England. Everyone, good evening. Thank you for being here. The chat is now over. It's uh, it, it's done. Um, I'm only joking. Yeah, um, obviously the, the south of England for you. Um, so I'm very intrigued in the chat. South, north, south, north, north, north. North is winning. South, South, North. South, South. Essex. I like the way you just threw in Essex. <laughs> Scot Scotland. North. Well, I live in I live in the north, but I've ventured down to the south a few times and uh, they both have their they both have their uh, draws, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Right, let's move it on. Move it on. Move it on. Right, I'm going... Right, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, SGI at the minute. SGI being Specialist Group International. 
Um, and uh, any, uh, well, I was going to talk about some recent work, and I believe that you have recently searched for a young chap called Liam. Yes. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, we got contacted by by mum, um, and uh, basically um, Liam crashed his car one night in a, into a wall with friends on board, and he 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 left the scene, and he he wasn't hasn't been seen since. Sorry, so, is Julie, is Julie, Do is Julie Dawn related? Pardon? Sorry, is there someone called Julie Dawn related? Sorry, someone just said yes, Liam from Julie Dawn. I didn't know if that was a family member or not. But anyway, okay, go on. So he 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 ran away. He not got. He wasn't wasn't seen. Um, the police done some searches a few days later. Put some searches in, but there was an area of water. Um, so they they the mum called me down, Joanne, and said, "Could you help?" And we offered our services free of charge again, which we we do occasionally, obviously. And um, that wasn't all over. The, why why wasn't that? like reported on because i didn't read because that in the media i, I read it on I your asked, website yeah well i asked the mum to keep it quiet because what will happen as soon as we arrive the media will swamp us so and lots of people will turn up so with back to the nicola bully search i was there left to fend myself for the media there was no one else there to to fend them off or set cordons up to keep them away from me so yeah. I ended up becoming the face that I didn't want to do, and I've said this before. But with this one, we I like to keep it quiet. It's like when I've done the Peter Tobin case. No media were there. April Jones never spoke to the media. And we we, we basically conducted this search using sonar of this lake um, to see that he wasn't on the bottom very quickly. I went down on my own one day, flew down, had a look. At, I walked about five and a half miles of the obvious trackways where you would go. Lots of volunteers went out as well uh, uh, to help the family, uh, but he's still not being found. So we cleared two areas, and that was that we, we denied them. But the only area we couldn't search, what we didn't have time to do, is around the edge of the lake in the reeds, and we'll probably Lowland Rescue will do that because that's uh, yeah. a task. You need lots of people to. We're divers, we do underwater, so that was more control. Um, divers in on one target, I think. Um, can I just say, Peter? Sorry, sorry. There, I just want. I just want to make a point because you you mentioned it a moment ago, and it's about the the the, the uh, sort of the media and press that were that came up came basically like thrust in your face in the Nicola Bully in the Nicola Bully case. Yeah. Is that I think I think people it's explained in the documentary, but I think anyone that doesn't know should be aware that like no one else was doing the media, were they? No, and, and I can talk about this bit. There was no one there to help me. I mean, we the the police walked, gave us a quick brief, and they just walked off and left us on their own. And then I was mm. swapped. Now, I got nothing against the media because they a lot of the time they could they they never treated me badly at all. There was one bit where they said I've been struck off, and all, you know that's fine. That's 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 news. But they 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 behave really well with me, to be fair, and they always have done because I'm not controversial or anything. I just we just done a job. But the problem is there was I was literally surrounded by the media. I said I've got no problem with them, and they they treated me well. But I it, you you offend you normally there'd be a cordon. There'd be a, was there no cordon? No, nothing. There was a present no cameraman. Well, we had cameramen following us down to the river who could have fallen in the river. And there was just, I mean, really nice people. Don't get me wrong. They're really lovely people, all of the reporters. But they they were out of free fall. We had drones flying over our heads. We had Really? Drones? I had droned about six feet in front of my face when we were trawling down the river. So My drones got going out, near your face? That's wow. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they were good operators. I mean, they weren't going to smash into me. But the point oh. is, I, I think... There was no one to control it. That was the problem. So every time I come out, I had cameras and microphones thrust in my face, and I was put on the spot all the time. And that's what made it very difficult for me. And I didn't want to be doing that media, whatever everyone thinks. And like people said, accused me of going up to promote my book. I on the Sunday when Paul contacted us, I emailed because I was due to do some TV work about the book the following week. We cancelled everything. 
we yeah. stopped all book publicity completely because it was not the right thing to do. So I cancelled all the. So my book never got any publicity at all. It was it wasn't spoken about anywhere by anybody. It was not yeah. in any paper. It wasn't anywhere. Um, which we lost out on that because it would have been a big promotion stuff, you know, for us. And but you had every right. Do you know what? You I had did, every right to promote your book, but, but out of decency, you didn't. I wouldn't. It's a matter of decency. And the last thing you would do is promote a book. So you stopped. So for weeks, yeah. I didn't speak about it. And, and, I, and, and then at the stage, once I got a few weeks later, I thought, you know what? I've got to carry on plugging this book for the publishers. And then we did weeks later. But, um, yeah, that was the that was the problem with a job. I became the spokesman. I didn't want to be there. I did not. I just wanted to do the job with my brilliant team. And yeah, great I, team. That was what it was about. You've got a lot of support in the chat right now, Peter. Yeah, thank you. A lot of support. A lot of support. Uh, thank you, everybody. Again, I'll, I'll say it again. The the viewers of this channel, uh, they seem to be quite a like minded bunch, kind, considerate, decent people. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for uh, thanks for telling us about that. Um, it wasn't very fair that like I mean, it's I suppose it's distracting as well to have cameras constantly. You're trying well, to do a job, and then you're being like the the spokesman. It's distracting. Yeah, you're you, you're the spokesman, and you're getting on trying to get a job done. Which, to be fair, the press didn't stop us doing the job. We we did our job to the best of our ability at all time. Yeah. They didn't get in our way. Um, but when they did talk to me, it was the end of the day and it was cold, it was dark. And it was, that was the time when they, and, and maybe first thing in the morning, but we didn't, I went straight in the boat in the morning, got off of it, you know? Yeah. Well, this, this channel, like everyone on this channel, like everybody is right behind you and you are, you've become a friend of mine and a friend of this channels. Thank you. So, you know, got guys going forward, we'll have, we'll have Peter on. Uh, as and when, and we can talk about different things. We can talk about the new book when that comes out. We can talk about other jobs that you that you're able to talk about. Yeah, uh, and you can just be a, a regular if, if you're cool with that. We'd love to. We'd yeah. love to have you on the channel as often as possible. Um, so we've talked about um, about the, uh, the search for Liam. Uh, really, really good here to go and do uh, to go and uh, try and bring some closure. And it's unfortunate that he's he's still missing. Uh, that must be actually a really sad part of the job for you. I don't enjoy dealing with the families. Um, I do it, and I, I'm, I'm probably quite good at it, but it, you've got to have a sympathetic ear, and it's very difficult trying to talk to a, a mum who's lost a son. And, uh, you know, with it, any, any family, whether it be Nicola's family or whatever, you're, and, you know, I, it, it's horrible having to deal with it. Often you have to deliver a message to say, unfortunately, we found, found your son in the river or whatever. It's not nice because... On average, you know, this year has been really quiet for drownings, luckily enough. Um, on average, we deal with about 10 drownings every summer. And 2016, we dealt with 16 within eight weeks. 16 bodies recovered. Whoa. People and a lot of families. So Too many. You just, it's, it is too many. And that's why I'm passionate about my water safety kids, you know, which I deliver the life jackets and, and, and trying to pump. But I'm one man doing that, you know, so it's... Uh, yeah. It's you. You do the best you can, um, and try and promote the water safety message. Really, uh, the water safety. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It's the Lucas Dobson water safety appeal, is it? Yeah. So he's got a Facebook page, and it's Lucas Dobson water safety campaign, and it's a setup with his dad originally, and then I, I just run it myself. Basically, that's it. I run it myself. I fund it myself now. We we originally the family raised thirteen thousand pound, bought lots of life. I delivered them. Now the money from ourselves is being pumped in. And we actually got a donation the other day from the Lord Lieutenant of Surrey of another one and a half thousand pounds, which if you look up Lord Lieutenant and the Lieutenancy, um, they do a fantastic job. They don't get paid, by the way. They're a ceremonial type role. They go out to charities. They're basically the king's representative in Surrey or Sussex in every county. Oh, right. They do a marvellous job and, and they do it they're normally quite well to do people. They do it in their own time. They don't get paid. And they and, and they host lots of functions. And, uh, you know, they kindly donated the family the, the £1,500 for a load more life jacket, which is oh, about to age, which was really good. So I thought I'd mention that, give them a shout. So Lord, the Lord Lieutenant, you know, if you didn't know what it was, it's a really important role in a county. Really important. 
yeah, no, that's that's great stuff. That's great stuff, guys. Keep hitting that like button. Let's get let's get the video pushed around. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. I've got new content all the time: interviews, documentaries, different kinds of work, different vlogs. If you enjoy the content, then uh, please consider subscribing. So uh, I'm going to move on to another section. Peter, uh, do forgive me. I need 30 seconds to grab something. Could you, while I'm gone, could you tell people where? Where they can fa where they can buy your book and how they can get it, uh, the audio book and stuff like that. And I'll sure. be thirty okay. seconds. Um, so the, you can you can order the book on Amazon. Um, you can get it in Waterstone. Some some Waterstone stock it. Uh, and other good bookshops they will order it in for you. Uh, but Amazon's a quick, as we all know, push the button. It's delivered the following day. The audio book is on Audible and Apple. I think it's on Music. And it's it, it it's out there, so it's it is available, um, and it obviously on sale in America in um, in no, November. Um, it, it's in hardback version at the moment, which I prefer, and then it comes out in softback in uh, March next year. That will be in the paperback version of it, um, and then obviously the new book will be sometime next year. So it's been. Right. Yeah. I'm just back. Uh, hold on, if I don't trip over a wire, I'm back. And where's he going? <sighs> Thought he's fallen down the toilet, Luke. <laughs> You're back. <laughs> I am back. So we got uh, we got some book information out. Don't forget the uh, towards the end of this video, this live, the winners. You pick you pick the winners already, I presume. And it's it's got lots of pictures in it, the book as well. I've got lots of pictures. Right, one thing I want, there's one thing I just want to say. There is a lady who is very 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 persistent. Who wants a, a cardboard cutout? Can you get it sorted, please? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, go on. Peter Tobin's house and gardens. Yeah. Yeah. I actually watched a documentary the other day about Peter Tobin. It's, yeah. I, he was a wrong and in, wasn't he? Yeah, well, if you look at, um, there was one called Expert Witness I was on the other day. It was BBC, and that was Unearthing a Serial Killer, I think it's called. And I was talking on that because... In the early, when I was on the job, no one knew that I was there. And it's only years later when the information started coming out. Now I'm obviously part of the documentary. But that was, a, there's a lot of pictures in there of the diving, the... I'm having a look now. All sorts of bits and pieces. What's that? That's Peter just chilling at the White House, you know, just like, like you do. Yeah, that was in 1999 at the White House. Or Guests of the White House. Quite people wouldn't believe me, but there it is. That's my mum's favourite picture, I think. But I don't know. Peter Folden at the what, at the home of the President of the United States of America. Yeah. What year was this? Uh, Nineteen ninety nine. So it's Clinton's uh, Clinton's uh, run. Wasn't yeah, it? it was. But it was a funny story, and I wrote about it in the book. Bill Utley. Um, he was over in the UK, and they invited me over the Secret Service, and I was at the FBI Academy as well. Now, what Bill done me a guided tour. He was the Secret Service. He gave me a guided tour of the White House, the Oval Office. And he was telling me that his favourite president was uh, Mr. Ronnie Reagan. And he was a real character, as you know. He used to be an actor. And on his desk, he kept, kept a massive jar of jelly beans. And he used to eat them all the time. This is the president. And Bill used to check his office at night with a couple of other guys, the Secret Service, walking around checking it for everything, make sure everything's locked up. <laughs> and the Oval Office, the honest truth. And one day, and what they used to do was take, take nick the president's jelly beans. And oh, don't do that. Don't away. steal the president's and jelly beans. Come up to Bill. He said, Bill, we need to have a chat. And he put his <laughs> arm around him. He said, you've been pinching my jelly beans. <laughs> It sounds I mean, like a, it sounds like a euphemism. It was great. It was great, and and he, he, apparently the, the Ronnie Reagan was such a lovely man. He was a real man's man. He would be. He was a real friend of the Secret Service, you know, and he treated them all like first name terms. He knew them all really well. But quite quite nice, really, really cool. Sorry, Lara, uh, I'm not missing any questions tonight because there's that many questions coming through, like the firing through. That it's it's super chats tonight. I'm normally quite um I normally just read every single thing. Uh but if I read every single question, I would never get I'd never get to the end of one. Peter couldn't answer before I got another one. It would just be it would just be too overwhelming. So there is a super chat option. There's like a 79p, there's a pound, don't go crazy. That's um 
no, like I said, normally I read everything, but I just simply can't tonight. Um, but there's a very cheap option, 79p, don't go mad. Uh, and yeah, it's it's there for you. So, righty oh, Right, I'm going to talk about some of the, uh, the old animals. Something that interests me is, because you've got, obviously, I store pretty much all of these animals. And... Um, you spend a lot of time with them. Is there any personality traits of any of these animals that people might not know about? Like, do the alpacas have a certain thing, or do you know what I mean? Is there anything that, like, any personality traits? I think I think we've got Frizz the chicken, the cockerel. He's a Polish chicken, and he will he will fudge. chase. Is it fudge? Chase my daughter around the yard, and he will attack. He will go up and run around her, and then she'll run off and he'll chase her around the garden. Are we he's talking a, about he's fudge? Real, he's a real character. So if you, if you get a chance when you're finished, but Google Polish chicken. has got a little round head. And then we've got Louis the Rescue Pig. So he's got his own Facebook page, Louis, Louis the Rescue Pig. I like that page, everyone. Yeah, he's got Louis. And uh, he's a character because he'll actually – you can go up to him and say bow, and he will get on his knees and give him a bit of food, and he'll climb down on his knees. He's incredible, and uh, and he will do a twirl. You ask him to give a twirl, and he will walk around and do a twirl. Oh tr- no! Tricks. Very very intelligent um, animals. Pigs are. Um, they all are. You know, you don't realise until you live with these creatures, and and the chickens will come and sit on your lap and stuff. They they're great. They're real real characters. All of them. Everyone is uh is giving compliments about the live tonight. Uh, thank you, everybody. Right, I've got, um, I've just got two super chats, but the chats haven't come through. So, but I'm, I'm, any, any kind of donation that comes in, uh, I've written your name down so that you can ask a, um, you can ask a question. So I've got Lady Dog Lover, and I've got Paula. Ah, Paula's asked a question. Uh, did you name the llama P when I asked? Oh, <laughs> oh, that's Paul. That's Paul, Paul the White. Hi, Paula. Can you can you see that question? I can't. I'm I'm looking from a distance. Did I name him? Did P- you name the llama P? P. No, he's he's the llama's um, Tia. 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 The llama's Tia, Welsh. So she's we we actually picked her up from Wales in a horse box. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I've got another got another super chat. Uh, let me just read these because um, they don't work, Luke. They, no, they are working because I've just got one now from Funky. Peter, you're great. What's what's the longest search you've ever been on? Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, I normally normally they're around a week at a time, and I think one of the long ones I did was a search of a garden in Boreham Wood. If you Google body found. Boreham Wood. I'm, what I'm going to do this week on my author Facebook, I'm actually going to put the pictures up of that search. And what it was was uh, the neighbour kept complaining that the, the old man was missing and that she accused the son of murdering him. Anyway, it's a long story. Um, after a week's search, I found the um, body buried under the rear path of the, the, the 91-year-old father. Um, quite sad. Wow. There's a long story to it, um, but it's he was the son did not murder him. He just wanted to be with his dad, and he buried him in the garden. As simple as that, really. Um, but it was a really sad case. But we, I found him after he was buried for five years under the path, and after a very detailed search, I found the two buried dogs. Sorry, one buried dog, um, an old three handguns and two hundred rounds of ammunition. Now, Dad was an ex-Polish soldier. There was nothing sinister. And he buried them in the garden. That was oh, a yeah. really good search. And again, using the technology, ground radar and magnetometers. And Dr. Carl Harrison, the forensic archaeologist who excavated the body. So I'm going to be putting some pictures up this week of the actual search that I did with my team. And it was got to the afternoon on day, I think it was day five, and the everyone was giving up that he's not here. And I said, Well, I've not finished yet. I'm not going to put my name to this until I've, I do a thorough job. That's when I found him under the rear garden path, buried behind the greenhouse. I um, I watched your interview with James English, and you talk a lot about some of these cases. So yeah, anybody that's uh, anybody that's not seen Peter's interview on James English, I'd go and check that out. Two hours of uh, uncut content, and there is also, if you've not seen it, there is a two-hour documentary with myself on this channel. 
I spend the day with Peter Falden, which is a bit of ev- a bit of everything. We go here, there, everywhere. We're up in the sky. We're at SGI. Mm. Uh, we're out with the animals, and there's a full interview in there. So anyone that's not seen it, please go and check that out. Um, right. So, um, right. Lady Dog Lover asks, what other animal would you like to own? <laughs> Elephant. Oh, that's a good question. I, I'm... I, I can't put a giraffe on the land, but um, I like I like all animals, really. I mean, we've got deer on the land as well, which Fonzie chases, unfortunately, every day. So you have to keep him on a lead some mornings. So you, if you see the deer out wandering in the fields, he'll, he'll, he'll run them down. Um, I love all animals. We've got, we've got um, ch- Chinese crested geese. We've got Cayuga ducks. We've got uh, Muscovy ducks. We've Mus- got, that, you hatched the Muscovy duck, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we just hatched. We've just had a load more. We've had nine, I think, thirteen other babies um, a few weeks ago, and they're this big now. They're really big, all following around the garden. They walk into <laughs> the lake and swim. So lovely. And and, they, and she's she's like a breeding machine, the muscovy. So she keeps popping the eggs out and hatching them. So we've got one sitting on a chicken egg at the moment, and that's due any day. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, right, so more about the animals from my side. Um, what's your favourite group of animals that you've got on the on your grounds? What's your favourite group? Like, you know, a packer, sheep, turkeys? Well, they're all, they're, all, they're all characters. I mean, you see a sheep standing in the field, but whenever I walk in, we've got a called, one called Ben, and he's tame, and he'll come right up to me and just rub his face against my leg. He's very, he just likes his cuddle. So, again, the others are a bit jittery, but they, they're animals have real, you know, personalities, and you don't realise that until you actually are, are close to these creatures. It's like the pig. The pigs have, have got their own personality. They all have. And they, they, they're all, they've got their little characters. They're, they're, they're characters on their own. You know, fantastic. I love, I love the animals, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, I, love the, I love the alpacas. Yeah, and uh, the German Shepherd, uh, but the alpacas are great, like, and they've just been sh- uh, shared, haven't they? Yeah, they've all been shared, and the, and they also get the vitamin D jab, and they've just been vaccinated for mites again for this year because they had some a couple of them had mites, so they've been had three injections um, by the vet came down and get, injected them. So yeah, I mean, it's 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 a lot of the the sheep are quite. You just have to watch for a fly strike in the summer where they get. Uh, a fly lay maggots in the skin, eggs, and then they burrow into the skin. You have to keep an eye for that, keep their fur short. But yeah, the, apart from that, the alpacas and the sheep don't need a lot of maintenance, really. Where does the uh, when you when you share the uh, alpacas, where does the fur go? Well, the sheep's wool is it's just not worth selling. I mean, it, next year when we do it, if anyone wants any, they have it. Um, alpaca there wool. Come and come and grab your sheep. We tend to give it away to be. But al- alpaca wool, you can get about eighty pound a bag, but it's where it's selling it, and it's just we're just too busy for that. So, excuse me, we just give it away. Yeah, yeah, cool. The alpaca wool away, we tend to do that. It's you know, and um, we got we get so much of it when they shear them. When they one interesting thing, when they shear them, they tie the legs together and stretch them out on a board, literally like that. They're stretched out, and then the Aussies come along, and they just shear them, um, grind their teeth off for us, check them all over, and away they go. <laughs> nice. I've got a super chat. It's from my, it's from a sister. Yeah. Uh, Peter, you're a great guy. I can't actually read it. Um, for some reason, I can't read that. Clean your glasses, Luke. No, it's not that. It's there's something over it. Um, Haley, text me. Ah, there you go. Peter, you're a great gra- guy. Oh, Hayley, it's already been asked. What's the longest search you've been on? You've already asked, answered it, though, haven't you? Yeah, well, there's, there, I say we've done so many um, over a week. Normally, the longest ones are around about a week when 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 we work on. But but they're normally cold cases. So if normally, in like if you take Surrey, somebody drowns, we get called. We find them within an hour and a half because we put the sonar in. I can quickly locate them. And rec- we recover them extremely quickly. And it's very high hit rate of finding people. Cold cases are different. So I'm working on the Helen McCourt case at the moment, helping uh, Marie McCourt, 
um, Helen oh, Shaw, that's another one. If you Google uh, Marie, Marie McCourt, Helen McCourt murder, she was murdered over 35 years ago. And, and I'm trying to help the family locate her in a remote sort of area. Um, but it's not, as, it's not as easy as it sounds, you know, because we've got no real clear intelligence. Um, but if you know someone's in a lake or reservoir, it's very easy to search and find them, or a river, if it's yeah. slow or a canal. Uh, just, sorry, mate, uh, just me, 23. Uh, I will sort out, sometimes I, I can see the super chat and sometimes I can't. Um, so that's why I'm noting some down. Just me, 23. If you write your question just normally now in the chat, I'll be able to see it. So I've got you written down. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Right, when an animal dies on your ground, what, what do you do? Do you, do you bury them or do you cremate them? What, what, what happens? No, I mean, if, it, if it's picked, you have to have them taken away um, because of death for rules. But alpacas, there is no rules. So what I do with the alpacas, we bury them. And I, I, as you're probably aware, that I use ground radar to look for buried human remains. So I don't just search underwater. I specialize in land search, a bit like Tobin case. So I then train forensic students on how to locate graves. With oh, use on, on, so you... I've, got, I've got quite a few around the land where I teach them how to locate grave sites, that type of thing. So each year I have forensic students down um, to, to, to help them. They contact me, yeah. So, you, so they basically, what I after death, they're, they're still they've still got like some purpose, and yeah, they have. Yeah, people Who's, are getting like, education out of it. Mark the hole, and then as the ground depression sinks, the grave will sink, and it will leave some sort of ground sign, you know, where they are, and will mark it. It's 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 an interesting subject because you can look at all the plant plants growth around it as well, and the different type of undergrowth that grows around. Ah. Right. But that's another speciality. That's to do with botany, and that would be Professor Pat Wiltshire. She's the specialist botanist who looks at pollen, you know, pollen and, and plant life. She's a specialist in that area. That's not my field, but she's she's incredible. Brilliant, brilliant. Right, okay. So, do, 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 do. ah, here we go. Uh, do, they, do the animals, do they cost a lot to upkeep? And is there any, and which, which food, which animal food is the most expensive? Probably the dogs. Probably the dog, dogs are, eat probably eat more than anything. They're quite are they on raw? Key. Yeah, they eat a lot of food. Uh, the chickens, believe it or not, eat layers of and the emus, and they, they go through a fair amount of few, food each week. Um, bags of it we have to buy. And then Louis the pig, he has um, pot belly pig food, which isn't too expensive. That's not too <laughs> bad. That lasts him. But we also give him apples off the tree, so he'll devour apples. He loves apples. And then we got crab apple trees down the bottom of the land and put buckets up and throw them in. And uh, But what the funny thing, one day we had a party and we had a load of old beer cans of beer left over. So I filled the my other pigs, filled this big drinks container up, a, a big rubber bucket where they normally have water in, and they drank a lot. And really? they, they wandered off and they were staggering. And then they just collapsed for the afternoon, snoring drunk. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, like a, sounds like a good life. But yeah, uh, they were great. Yeah. I've got a question here from Just Me 23. Uh, what's the most interesting thing you found during your searches, Peter? I think one of the most interesting searches we did was a shot a set down the Lanharry Mine, Lanharron Mine in South Wales. It was Helen and Megan II's murder. And I was called in to search a mine shaft. And he said, we need a mine shaft. So I said, yeah, we can do that. And he said, the only problem is it's flooded. So the 750-foot flooded mine shaft. So use a special camera, a drop camera, and a miniature submarine, an RAV, what we have. And I actually found the shotgun cartridge at the bottom of that. Um, and and then on the way back, I found the jacket, says we well, circled up the shaft. We were there for a week, and I found the original jacket. They've never solved the murder, um, but someone was arrested and charged and released. Um, but it's it was a good find. So we, we found the evidence, what we were looking for, which was a real achievement. And then, you know, the Linda Rizal case, that's still ongoing. There's just so many. I mean, I... I worked all over and all over the country um look finding things over the years and if you read the book you'll you'll understand a bit more about it 
Speaking so, of speaking of the book, sorry to interrupt because a lot of people are a lot, a lot of people have come on uh, for the book winners. Yep. I uh, just want to say what I'm going to do is a, a couple more little kind of mini uh, things I want to speak about, and then we'll be doing the book winners probably in the next 10, 15 minutes. Okay. okay. So we're kind of we're, we're coming to kind of coming towards the end. Um, everybody, don't forget to hit like on. We've got a super chat. Trace it if you send me your super chat. In the normal chat, I will get that sorted. Um, one second. Yeah, everyone hit like. Uh, if you enjoy the channel, you enjoy the content, uh, consider subscribing. Peter is going to be a regular as and when on the channel so we can have some interesting chats. Tracy, get your super chat over. I'll do that as soon as I can. If I miss it, could any moderator please um, let me know? So, uh, book winners, we're going to do very shortly. Um, but first, I've got a little, uh, you, you have no idea about this, Peter. Mm. Right. So Peter, can, uh, you, you told, you told me and you said on the uh, documentary that you was a big fan of the Thunderbirds. Yeah. When you was younger and you wanted to make the real life Thunderbirds. Yes. Yeah. Hold on. I've got, uh, Rustic Rach has got a question. Uh, have you ever been called for jewelry service? No, never. Nope. Never. 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 And to be honest, I, I wouldn't want to go. But I no, I've never been called to jury service. No, that's right, Rachel, no. There you go. Short, short and sweet answer right there. Right. Um, okay, right. So this is the back onto the Thunderbirds. So you like the Thunderbirds when you were younger, you wanted to make the real life Thunderbirds. I met I met the lads, they are an elite team of guys. So let's test your knowledge on the Thunderbirds, shall we? Yeah. Right. I've got eight questions, right? I didn't tell you about this, did I? <laughs> <laughs> right, and it, guys, if you are, um, if you watch the Thunderbirds TV series from the 60s, this quiz is for you as well. I've got eight questions, okay? Multiple choice, and you've got 10. Hold on. Sorry, we've got a question, super chat. Tracy asked if Peter, sorry, one sec. Right, Tracy asked if Peter's found any antiques or artifacts during searches. Yeah, loads. Um, found um, a number of safes in the river. We found some missing ATMs, which were parts of a, a series of robberies, yeah. and antiques, guns, all sorts of things. Lots of jewellery, a bag full of jewellery. And um, one day, one of the funniest things found, we found a bag of uh, sex toys on the bottom of uh, a canal boat. So that <laughs> I gave it to the SIO. That made him smile. But anyway, uh, I'll that, have to ring my brother. He's been looking for them. We Hi. found some... Really interesting stuff over the years of all, all sorts. Not not what we're looking for, but other other items, you know, which are just part of the search, what you find on the bottom of rivers. Because you obviously get these magnet fishermen now doing lots of stuff as well. I've got a... Uh, Rustic Rach, can you... Sorry, Peter. Rustic Rach, can you write that question again? Because I can't see it. I don't know what's happening with some of the super chaps. But uh, Rusty Rach, if you could write that again, that'll be a fan dabby dozy. Right, I'm just going to put them on hold a second. Guys, if you if you liked the um, Thunderbirds of the 60s, I don't know much about it, to be honest. But if you're a fan, Peter's a fan, then as I ask these questions, answer as well. Okay, eight questions, I believe. And once I ask the question, there's about 10 seconds to answer. So I'm going to be Chris Tarrant over here. Cool. Other quiz show presenters uh, are available. Right. So, here we go. Right. We're going to start in three, two, one. In the Thunderbirds series, who was the Thunderbirds 3 astronaut and Thunderbirds 5 space monitor? Oh, God. Jordan Tracy, John Tracy, Scott Tracy, Alan Tracy. Scott, Scott was the number one, I think. And it was Alan. And we're going to, sorry, it's really fast, this. Scott. No. Who was the Thunderbird 1 pilot and Thunderbird 3 co-pilot? Scott Tracy was number one. You've got Alan, John, Virgil. and Gordon. Virgil. No, he's not an answer. It was Scott. Yeah. Right, this is going really fast. Who was Lady Penelope's butler and chauffeur? Oh, Parker. Parker is correct. Uh, who was the pilot of Thunderbird 2? Scott, Alan, John, or Virgil, Tracy? Alan. Alan? No, it wasn't Alan, it was Virgil. Uh, who was the engineer, scientist, and inventor of the Thunderbird machines? Brainy, four eyes, swatty, or brains? Brains, brains. It was Mr. Brains. Uh, okay, correct, Tomando. 
who was International Rescue's London agent? Lady Penelope. Lady Penelope. Uh, how many have we got left? Oh, we're still going. Uh, last two. Who was the Thunderbird for uh, Aquanaut on the Thunderbird 2 co-pilot? Gordon, Alan, Scott or Virgil? Gordon. It was Gordon. I'll get back to Paula on that one. Uh, who was the Thunderbird 5 space monitor and Thunderbird 3 astronaut? Virgil, Scott, Alan or John? Tracy. Alan. Alan. It was John. Oh. Scored, he scored four out of eight. Go on. You need to you need to dust up. Right, sorry, I've got a question. Paul, Paula, if you could write that question in the normal uh, chat, I'll make sure that's logged. One second. Uh, I've got a lot of uh, people answering questions. I do need a secretary for this. She's she's <laughs> crazy. Right, um, Paula, and I think Tracy. Can any moderators let me know if um, Paul and Tracy still need a question answering? I'm not too sure. Uh, I know that one of them is. Um, I know one of them for sure. One second, let me uh, just wipe the old windows. I definitely need an eye test. Right, I'll tell you what then. Okay. Um, why don't, let's not keep people waiting any longer. I, yeah, Haley, you can be my secretary. Um, so let's. I'm going to hand over. I'm going to hand it over to you, Peter. And if we can uh, reveal the book winners one by one. Yep. Yep. Okay? And then if you could tell me their, if you could tell me their username. Yep. Um, if you could tell me their username. Okay. Right. So let me let me firstly say. Okay. Right. Mm. Uh, so this the way this will work then is if Peter reveals the winners. Uh, via their username and then you can if you'd like to read out whatever you've got written down and then what I need the winners to do is I need them to go on to the documentary the original documentary and um, let me know that they're a winner mm. and then what I can then do is I will get their email address yeah if, if sorry let me just let me just reiterate that again so if the winners will go on the documentary after the live stream and let me know they're a winner and put their email address, yeah. what I'll do is I'll log their email address down, I'll delete the comments so the email address isn't out there, and then I'll get in touch with the winners. Uh, I'll ask them which way they'd like to receive the book, and then I'll hand that information over to you, Peter. Is that all right? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm back in the office later on in the week when I'm back formal, and then what I'll do, I'll get them signed, personal message, and Jane will package them up. And we'll get them sent from the office, all packaged up. Yeah, thank you. Brilliant. So I, I'm, I'm just going to write the winners. So yeah, just to reiterate, just to reiterate one more time, because I know sometimes I talk at the speed of lightning. Um, if you are a winner, please go on to the documentary. Let me know you're a winner. Leave your email address. I'll quick. I'm, you can do that after this live stream. I'll quickly note down the email addresses. And they'll delete the comments so that you know they're not all flying around. So, so first one, one. first one, um, Sue Nigel, fifty nine. Sue Nigel, fifty nine. Yep. Uh, if you're here, show yourself now. But let's. What, have you, what what's the what the notes you've got there, Peter? Pardon. What notes have you got there? Have you got their answer or? I've got it on. A, I've got it all on my phone, so I've, I've just got the names written down. But they're all brilliant answers, and thank you. They were, they were good. They're all picked out earlier. Okay, Sue Nigel, fifty nine. Congratulations, you are winner of uh, a personally signed. Hold on, what what am I doing? You are the winner of a personally signed "What Lies Beneath" uh, book from Peter himself, signed, sealed, delivered. So congratulations to. Well done. Uh, Sue Nigel. Okay. Uh, next one is Kelly Williams. 6553. Kelly Williams. Yep. What is it? Sorry, 6 what? 6553. Five, Kelly Williams, 6553. Five, five, okay. Um, I'm very intrigued about what the... Um, I'm going to go back through the comments. And Kelly, Kelly's in, Kelly's in the chat. Well done to Kelly. Congratulations. 
Um, what I'll do is I'll uh, just go back through the comments and look at look at some of these answers because I'm really intrigued. Kelly Williams is number two. Okay, let's move it on to number three. Um, Linda Davis. Linda Davis, come on down. Is that it? Just straight up Linda Davis? Yep, that's it. Okay. Well done, Linda Davis. You have received this magical, magical great book. Linda Davis. Go on, Linda. Um, and the next one is uh, Sharon651. Sharon. Uh, Sharon 651. Yep. And the next one is Tara. The final one is Tara Vixen. Well done to Sharon, by the way. Tara Vixen. Yeah. How do you spell? Is it V-I-X-E-N? V-I-X-E-N. V-I-X-E-N. Okay. So I'd just like to... Do you know what? Everyone in the chat is is being really like really nice, like congratulating the winners. Um, so so just to reiterate, um, Sue Nigel fifty nine, Kelly Williams six double five three, Linda Davis, Sharon six five one, and Tara Vixen. Like uh, again, not to be a broken record. If you go on to the documentary, uh, let me let me know you're a winner. I can reference with your username and. Uh, um, I'll tell you what will be better actually if you let me know you're a winner I will then reply to that comment and then you can send me the email address and then I can just take it quick and delete the comment so congratulations to all the winners thank you for thank you for doing that Peter thank you for doing the giveaway no, no thanks for the great answers it was really good lots to go through so many I told so it was hard was it? <clears throat> was it hard to do yeah, there were so many to go through. I mean, there were so many lovely comments and support from everybody. It was pretty fantastic. And that's why I thought if we give five away, one's not enough, to be honest with you. So that's why we went for the five originally, wasn't it? So, yeah, yeah, brilliant. I've done what we can. Also, what I'll do in case, in case, which would be absolute sacrilege, if there's anyone that's a winner that's not in the, uh, not in the chat, I'll put, the, I'll put the usernames in the description of the video. Yeah. Uh, so anyone that comes in later on um, uh, will be aware. So, yeah, they are the winners of the books. Guys, obviously not everybody can can get one, but like Peter's already said, it is at Waterstones, it is on Amazon, it is an audio book. Um, I was in Waterstones the other day, and it's if you go to the true crime section, you can't miss that spine. That's the most marketable colour in the world, that. And I learned that from Larry Barker. There, there is some. Next week I'm doing three book festivals. I'm doing one in Wantage. Um, uh, two in Oxfordshire and the Isle of Wight Book Festival next Friday where I'm signing books and doing a speech. So that should be fun. And I'm thinking next year somewhere I might get a theatre. And if anyone thinks that's a good idea, let me know. But I'm thinking of getting a theatre and doing a, like, uh, a couple of nights in a theatre of a true kind talk, basically. Yeah, that'd be wicked. You need to get to the plaza in Stockport. Well, whatever. We'll see what we can do. I'm just my, thinking my about it. I get lots of people ask, so it'd be it'd be a good evening. You could, do a, you could do a little, you could do a tour. No, no, too much. <laughs> yeah. What lies beneath on the road? Mm. Big orange, big orange van rolls up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, um, that's the winners. Have I missed? Uh, have I missed any? Uh, oh, sorry, one second. One second, reading something. Have I missed? Uh, any super chats, uh, moderators? Can you let me know if I've missed any super chats? Because I'd hate to kind of wrap it up and have missed any. Um, so we'll just wait for that. Uh, wait for that for a moment. We're getting to nearly ninety minutes. <laughs> By the way, guys, what I have set up on my channel is I've done a just a one tier membership, and it's like four ninety nine. And it includes uh, member shout outs, uh, priority reply to comments, member only live streams, member only polls. And I did an extra perk, which was early access to new videos. So if anyone's interested, uh, that's 4 99 and you are called an icebreaker. Don't ask me where I got that from. Uh, so, yeah, um, if you want to be a member, that's a uh, fan dabby dozy. I don't think I'm going to do any higher levels because I don't really feel comfortable with it. Five or a month. Is 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 pretty uh, is pretty uh, reasonable to me a month, uh, and I don't think I'm going to do anything above that. To be honest with you, uh, and you can quote me on that. 
So I'm just going to see if there's any more stupid chats. Don't think. I have got Paula and Tracy written down here. So let's just see if. Um, I'm looking. One second. Uh, Paula and Tracy. Right, I'll go for the final restoration of the eyes. Right, okay. One second. Paula, Paula, Paula. Right. God, my eyes are really... <laughs> Sorry about this, people. I know it's, it might be a bit annoying, but they're really bad. But it's, it's made me realise I need to sort them out. Uh, what was the most critical skills and qualities someone needs to be effective in search and rescue operations and how can they be developed or improved? That's a great question, that. I think patience. Patience is the biggest thing because um, <clears throat> it's so easy to give up and you've just got to be determined to continue the job, whether it's rain or shine or snow. You've got to be determined. And so many things get missed because people give up. And people get left laying in rivers. And I'm not talking about Nicola Bully. I'm talking about many other. Because the problem is now in the UK, there's only about 10 underwater search units that now cover the whole of the UK, um, out 43 police forces. So there's very few. So, you know, we're limited on resources. And also, they don't all have the high technology that we carry, the really high-frequency sonar that can do a quick search of a lake. That's why you often see days later they're still got volunteers in looking and then the body will pop up eight days later because people couldn't find it and and that's where the technology is absolutely vital to to find to locate people quickly because it's impossible to dive a lake it's too big you need the technology to go over it quickly to locate the target and then do the recovery and that's why sonar if it's sonar in the right hands we can find a lady's handbag with it. We can find a weapon with it. It's such, it's so good. The detail, we see every stick, stone laying on the bottom. It won't go into reeds. It won't go into weed. But if you've got a clear bed, and most beds are clear, you can see everything that lays on the bottom and you can locate and recover really quickly. The sonar, does that, am I right in thinking that goes out 30 metres or 30 Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the maximum really for a body is 30 metres. They call it the suede. So it goes 30 metres that way and 30 metres that way. The preferred, I use in generally rivers, I tend to use a 10 metre scan wide because most rivers aren't 20 metres wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can use 20, if I'm doing a quick sweep, like we had a lad in a big lake, um, and you, there is actually a picture of body on sonar. I'm not going to say where it is because it would be quite upsetting, but there's a picture in the uh, book, and you maybe show it, um, Luke, in there. You show uh, it now, I can. It shows a body on the bottom in a, in a large area, and that I used a 20-metre scan on, and I found him. It, we would never have found him without the sonar, and he was found in 10, 15 minutes. Oh. I found so the picture I'm going to find now, which I will, because it's, it's, only it's a couple there of somewhere, but it's it just shows the sort of clarity. Um, so this is is this um so this is a what the sonar image looks like then as you're yeah, going yeah. down the river. Yeah, it's actually a light. That is a body laying on the bottom, but I, I don't say where it is because it could be distressing. But it is a body on the bottom of a of a of a lake. Right. So this is quite a. I think this is quite a uh, interesting part then, because anyone that's wondering what the image of sonar looks like uh, on, the, on, on the riverbed, then in this book, there is a picture and that... Hold it and, there. Hold it there. That's it. That, that, that's what a body looks like laying on the bottom. Peter, can you describe the white lines and the brown lines? and what? Yeah, that's, on? that's just the, the, the middle to the centre line. And, and then you've got the... Um, that's just... You can see all the detail on the bottom. There's no sticks. It was a very clean lake bed, that particular one. And that was in about 25 feet of water. And he was a, a young lad who drowned, unfortunately. Um, so it's it, it's very clear. And the, the difference between our sonar is what they call 1800 kilohertz. And they'll say... I pioneered the use of sonar since 1999. I went out to America. I was the first person ever to use it forensically in the UK. Um, and I pioneered the use of it. We're, we're looking at the National Police Search Advisor. And that's how I become eventually on the expert database and stuff. So it's it's done so many trials with. But that's the sort of thing I see. And I that's, can, unmistakable. that's unmistakable. 
It is. It is unmistakable. Uh, that, 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 I mean, <laughs> yeah. sorry to be like obvious, but that's a body in the water, isn't it? It is. It is. And, it, and, and if it's there, you know, I, I sound confident sometimes, but I'm, I do. If, if, if they're there, I will find them if, if there's a body in the water. And the only time, if we get called, say, five or six days after the event and it's been flood water, really heavy flood water, I'm not talking about just moving. I'm talking about after a big storm and it normally takes two or three days for the water to build up and that will push a body down the river quicker but in normal rivers they tend to stay they drown they go straight to the bottom they do not float whatever people tell you they don't float they go to the bottom and they stay on the bottom until the body starts to decompose from the inside out and they bloat up like a seal and then they will float to the surface ah. and then they will drift and that's how that's that's internationally known that's how all the experts and that's how all of us we know that whenever we find a body it's it's very, it's not far from where it went down, and that's 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 fact. That, well, that's fascinating. Uh, what's like what what's the kind of time frame on a body? If a body that goes into a uh, pardon the pun into a body of water, yeah, and they die. What's the rough time frame of when they would pop up? Well, it can be more, on... it, right. It, it depends on the on the body fat of the body. There's no exact science. What anyone ever tells you, there is no science to it. It's it can be four days. It could be 20 days. It just depends. And it'll only come up when it's ready to come up. So what they do, they go slightly buoyant first, slightly buoyant, and then they start to rise to the surface. And eventually they will pop to the surface. And then they will, then at that stage, the body will float. And then it will move down the river with the current. But bodies on the river, because the current's very slow on the bottom, they, they, they might struggle to swim for a bit. And then they go down and they stay on the bottom until they decompose and they pop up. So they don't move a great deal. And that's in all my experience of, you know, 20 odd years and that we always find them unless we get called two weeks after the event and there's been flood water. Once there's flood water, then that becomes an issue. That's very, very interesting. So just what I say, uh, I have Peter is already aware that somebody would like a cardboard cutout. <laughs> I've already told Peter, uh, so uh, I've not let you down. I've actually uh, mentioned it to Peter. Um, that's really interesting. That is uh, really interesting. Um, I think, I think that's, I think that's everything. We've been on for ninety-two minutes. Yeah. Um, I've, got my, I've got to cook my steak here. I'm here on my own at the moment, so I've got to go and cook my dinner in a minute. I grabbed a. So you go. What, what steak are you having, and what are you having with the steak? I just got a rump steak and mushrooms and some sweet corn, I think, and then I'm going to have a glass of whiskey. I've got I've got the steak on the on the counter over there and it's ready to go. So I'll uh, I'll be cooking that in a minute on my George Foreman grill. <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the George Foreman grill. On the Foreman grill, yeah, I'll get that. And I'm going to have a whiskey, whiskey, and I'll probably sit and watch the TV. I said my wife's at home, so I'm just down there and I'm just going to sit and have a drink and i um, probably go to bed about midnight or something. Get up. So yeah. Yeah, I need to let my dinner go down first. We've been, we've been chatting for a long time. That's quite normal for me. I tend to chat for a long time. So you sort of... <laughs> yeah, I can I can do a bit of that as well. Um, I know. Uh, right. Hmm. So um, I think I think one second. Let me just read that. Uh, a lot of people saying they've enjoyed the live. Thank you very much. Can thank I you. just can I firstly uh, thank you, Peter, for coming on. Thank you. Thank you for interacting. Thank you for asking the questions. Thank you for being open. Thank you for doing the book giveaway for my subscribers. I really appreciate it. Well, um, it's, it's a really nice gesture. Well, I'd like to say, Luke, that thanks for inviting me on. And people say, you know, why do you go to a small YouTuber to talk to? Sorry, you broke, you broke, you broke up there, mate. You said, yeah. sorry, thanks for so, on. Go on. People always say to me, why do you go on a small YouTube channel? I actually get on well with you and you're honest. And that's why I like talking to you. I like talking to people. But I don't like it in a busy environment where you've got lots of, you know, lots of people. Um, I, I can chat quite openly and comfortably chatting to you. And nor I like talking to normal people. Thank uh, you. I enjoy that. I and and your audience as well. People understand that you know the sort of work we do. And and, and you know, unfortunately, it's a very sad job. But I'm I'm quite normal behind that. The face you see me on TV. I'm a bit of a practical joker, really, and I'm not. 
I'm not, I can't be, I can't laugh on TV. No, As, you, yeah, oh, sorry. You, no, we dropped the phone. You're dealing with the unfortunate stuff, not all the time, but, you know, we do other stuff as well. But I, it's just nice to have a, a general relaxing chit-chat without a suit and tie on. Absolutely. Uh, sorry, mate, there's a, there's a question from Yum Yum that I've missed, so I'm just finding it. Uh, one second. Yeah. We'll definitely have to wrap soon because I can't see anything. Right, you, uh, Yum Yum, can I have my question? I'm just going to scroll up, just bear with me. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. Um, okay, uh, I can't actually read that. Um, oh, have you been called? Is that the one? Did I say what? What name did I say? Yum yum yum. Sorry, mate. I'm getting a bit confused. Whoever, whoever's, um, yeah, yum yum yum. Uh, they asked if you've done. Is that the jury? The jury service question, because I think we asked that earlier. No, I've not been called to jury service. Yeah, but, well, I think there might be uh, there might be another question from Yum Yum. Uh, so just hang on a moment, Yum Yum. If you can get your question over, uh, if it's the jury service one, it's already been answered. But if it's a different one, then um, I'll wait a moment to get it over. Ah, okay, we've got it now. What was the worst part of the April Jones investigation? Probably finding out that she, they found the various fragments and body parts in the house. We we did not find them. That was I. I um, we were doing the search of the river, a lot of the woodland. We had the helicopter up, so it was a huge search operation with, you know, multiple agency, mountain rescue, cave rescue, members of the great British public who came out to. It was just a sad case. Knowing you, I've got three daughters, and knowing that some evil individual can just do that to a child and um yeah. it doesn't it doesn't deserve to live i mean hopefully you know someone will uh go with him maybe in jail one day but it, yeah. he's just an eve you cannot what anybody said you cannot make these people better you know he is he's just an outright monster the same as tobin at the end of the day tobin was an absolute monster and he, you know, he died. There was no tears shed when he died months ago, you know, last year. So the thing, it, with, um, the thing yeah. with April is that she she had cerebral palsy, I, I learned. I don't know what she had. No, I, she did. She like 100%. It, I think it, it might have been mild, but uh, either way, she was a five-year-old, tiny little thing yeah. with cerebral palsy. I've got a daughter, as you know, um, yeah. and obviously you said you have, and... It's unfathomable to think about uh, something like that. So, you know what, Peter? Um, I'm, thank you for the question from um, Yum Yum Yum. Uh, respect for going doing that job because that was that's quite harrowing, and you did that free of charge. So, um, that's yeah. another 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 piece of work that you've done free of charge. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think everyone appreciates what you do, mate. Um, I think, guys, I think we should wrap it up. We're at 97 minutes, so let's give it another two and we can slowly wrap down and we've got 100 minutes. If anyone's not hit the like button, hit the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. Um, go and in, go in search online for what lies beneath. Go and check out Louis the Pig's Facebook. Go and check out the documentary. I spend the day with Peter Falding. It's on my channel. Go and look at the James English interview. I can, can I say, on, on, on. If, if you follow me on Instagram, I'm useless on Instagram, so I'm not really used to it. So I've got, I, don't, I don't do a lot on Instagram. I've, I post up pictures of my animals, really. But my Facebook, my author Facebook, Peter Folding, is the one where I tend to do most posts of just random stuff, really. And people can go on the specialist group, International Yeah, yeah. yeah the company one, the SGI, SGI Rescue Specialist Group International. Um, we were the the guys were doing their medical refresher training last week, so we didn't post. They were basically doing their me, their first first aid emergency responder refresher, so there was nothing to post last week. So they're all doing that, but they're busy training again this week. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant. Well, you know what? Um, thank you for thank you for the live. Thank you for asking me on. No, no problem, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you again in the not too distant yeah. future. And we can... just like to say thank you to everybody for dialing in and the great support from all your followers. It's absolutely brilliant, and love talking to you. All. Um, 
it, it, it was a nice evening, actually. Enjoyed it. I'm going to have to empty my bladder in a minute after two of these. I, I, I'm the same. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Everyone's been really, really sound. Yeah. Everyone's been really top. Um, you know, that's all. That's all I can say. Really, there's nothing to. There's nothing to kind of um, say negatively about the chat. It's been really, really good. Uh, yeah, I've had a good time there. Thank you to everyone that's got involved. That's asked a question. That's been interactive, and that's uh, sat here for. 99 minutes and 50 for four seconds. Um, I've really enjoyed it. You need your tea. I need to go to the toilet. I think you need the toilet as well. <laughs> so, Peter, I will speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Enjoy your steak. Yeah, thanks. And thanks, everybody. And I'll see you again soon. Take care. Thank P you. Peace out. Peace out, Peter. Thanks, Luke. All the best. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks. Peace out, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank Ciao. you. Thank you. Right. Take care. <laughs>